now for something completely different. Oots! <laughs> Didactic do's and don'ts! Teaching is a very different thing from learning. Nudism? Yes, it is. Nudism? Proof? Well, we do learn things we've never been formally taught, and some people try and teach us things that we never actually learn. That's because learning does not require teaching. That's a scary thing for a teacher to say, right? No, it isn't. Because even the self-taught needs some quality references. Today, many of these references are in video format. A lot of worthwhile teaching can now happen at any time and anywhere through online video. With great devices comes great accessibility. So you're going to want your teaching videos to be the very best they can be. But how? There are do's and perhaps a longer list of don'ts. I don't pretend to know them all, but I'll share a few from my list. Interested? Wonderful! And now, chapter one, the do's. The do's. Perhaps the most important thing to do in any lesson, video or not, is to properly set up why we should learn what it is we're about to engage in. It's really tempting to jump into the how right away and keep it at that. It's the easy fix. But the why is super important because that's the true anchor of learning. When you understand why, the how has a better chance of sticking. Limiting your explanation to the how is tantamount to saying, hey, here's the quick way around it, make sure you remember it long enough for the exam and then forget about it. Keep the why short and sincere, but don't skip it. Trust your audience. There is no need to review content in your intro. Other videos serve that purpose. Trust that your audience will go back and view the prior videos if need be, perhaps in a playlist. Actually, they just might have jumped to this video because they thought they could tackle it right away. Trust them to access content that fits their zone of proximal development. Their Goldilocks not too hard, not too easy, just right challenge. Reword. You want to make sure your learners can follow, so the temptation to use the simplest possible vocabulary is strong. But it could also be wrong. This is a short-term strategy at best. Words help us add nuance to concepts. Copping out and limiting your vocabulary doesn't help achieve a finer understanding. Reword to the wise. The idea is not to teach vocabulary for vocabulary's sake, but, you know, nudge nudge, wink wink, say no more. Try and keep your video lesson as concise as possible. If there are many nuances or subtleties to what you're explaining, perhaps this could be worth more than one video. Just how long is short? Here are my personal guidelines regarding length. Three minutes or less, straightforward concept, quick aha moment or conversation starter. Six minutes or so, complex concept with some nuances. Twelve minutes or so, major topic, addresses several issues and subtleties. Eighteen minutes or so, TED talk length. People are going to expect a paradigm shifting, out of the box thinking, thoroughly engaging subject and great speaker if they're going to hang around for that long. Right, now, what happens to your learners if your explanations are not quite clear? None shall pass! Well, a bit overly dramatic perhaps, I hardly think it'll... None shall pass! Have you ever heard an explanation that is actually more complex than what's being explained? The type that makes you think, well, if a person can understand this explanation, they clearly don't have a problem with the subject to start off with. Don't do that. Don't wing it. Sure, some people will tell you that your videos will sound more natural if you just hit the record button and start explaining. As if the, what I call the HRTs, made the teaching experience more authentic. After all, that's often what we do in a live classroom, right? But in my opinion, that's missing the point of video. Here's your chance to make sure your explanation is not only tight, but perfectly right. Unless your ad-lib explanations are concise wonders of clarity, keep in mind there's no amount of rewinding that can compensate for poor didactics. What improvisation adds to authenticity often lacks in sound pedagogy. Scripting your videos doesn't mean they have to sound read. Oh, and by the way, I am reading this very sentence. 
Don't say something, something is easy or simple. Let your audience decide that for themselves. If I tell you something is super easy and you don't get it, what does that make you? Nothing is easy, nothing is hard. And when you think about it, what's the point of telling learners something is easy? Do you mean they don't need to pay much attention? Do they really need a teacher for easy stuff? There are many more do's and don'ts, of course, probably enough to make several more videos like this one. Perhaps the most important thing is practice. Practice and getting honest feedback from friends and colleagues. The two most important things are practice, getting honest feedback, and an unwavering pursuit of improvement. The three, oh bugger. Now go away or I shall teach you a second time.